The NNA today won the right to challenge the TPD ban on snus in the EU. Right, that's good news from the High Court in London today. The court agreed that the challenge regarding the ban on snus in the UK can be referred to the European Court of Justice. Now, we didn't do that by just sitting on our backsides doing nothing. There was the chairman, president and founder, if you like, of the NNA was there and he's sitting with a big grin on his face. And there he is, Professor Jerry Stimson. Jerry, well done, well done. Run me through the day, what happened? Dave, I have got, a, I've had a big grin on my face since um, about 12.15 today um, and a lot of emotion. I mean, the, the whole court thing was up in the air and I was sitting there next to Jess and as the court decision was being relayed by the judge, we gradually realised that we, we got it. So, you know, I still can't quite get over this. Now, I'll go into some of the details in a minute but i'm thinking i'm sitting there thinking there's nna small little organization you know volunteers people who want to do good and not many resources but here we are sitting in the high court in london with all these people in front of us with wigs on and the judge sitting there in robe and you know red sort of you know ribbons and so on and here we are challenging the department of health challenging the EU about the TPD ban on the sale of snus. And we got a result. It is. You know, how can that happen? You know, NNA has been running since 2015. You know, we're all mates, we all do stuff, we all get tired and all the rest of it. Suddenly we're there and we're, we're off to, um, you know, we're off to the European Court of Justice. So absolutely, you know, fantastic day and you know everybody has put work into this you know over all the years and so on it's really really a brilliant day so yeah it, it's fantastic i'll go into the details in a minute but it's a bit of an emotional roller coaster today for all of us i think well yes yes I, i'm, I'm going to say this now i mean there's been all kinds of expressions of delight have come up on the periscope chat the latest one being great work nna much appreciated from taffy jock well done all from jim cockney Sputz 40 said thanks, Jerry, and I want to use that as a little springboard to say a great big thanks to Jerry because he's the man that knows what to do, you know. Um, I'm just a get big bluff agent. He's the guy that knows how to write all this stuff, and he can stand up in front of people in court and come across as really rather good because he is really rather good. So, <laughs> what what happens now? I mean, what actually happened in that? I know we were asking to. Yeah. To, to join the case, but how does that work? How has the NNA joined the case? What's that all about? Okay, so today we're at the High Court and it's, um, you know, a Gothic Victorian building. There's dozens of courts there and we, we file in and there's NNA's barrister and NNA's doing this on a shoestring. We've got, you know, a barrister and me kind of doing it. and. There's the Department of Health barristers and legal teams and Swedish match are there as well with their legal teams. And we're sitting in the court, row of barristers in wigs at the front, then a row of solicitors and then me and Jess and a row of other people at the back. Now, the background to the case is that Swedish match, who are the main makers of SNUS, are challenging the TPD ban on the sale of SNUS. But to do that, they have to bring a case within one of the EU states. They can't challenge it direct to the EU, so they have to bring the case in a country, and they decided to bring the case in the UK because the court system is a little bit less complicated than in some other countries. So Swedish match bringing the case in the court on commercial grounds. I mean, they make it, they believe in it, they believe in the health aspects of it. Uh, and they have to bring the case against the UK government. So the case is brought against the Secretary of State for Health. So the defendant is the Department of Health. And that's why the Department of Health barristers are there. And um, for example, some of you might've heard of Alette Addison, who is the Department of Health civil servant on tobacco, she was there. So 
Swedish Match are bringing this case because they say they've been unfairly treated, that theirs is the only tobacco product which is banned, and it's disproportionate because, in fact, theirs is the only tobacco product which has about 1% of the risk of smoking. When I mean, you look at the data, snus actually looks safer than e-cigarettes. I mean, I've been looking at the data and I'm quite surprised at that. You know, the risk of using snus is so low and it's been such a benefit. We'll go on to that a bit later. But technically, as soon as Swedish Match brings this case, then others can apply to join the case. And that's what NNA decided to do. We couldn't bring a case like this on our own. So we're piggybacking on the Swedish Match case if you follow me and so we've got particular arguments where we couldn't have done it unless the case had been brought first so that's kind of the first step so the second step is nna asks to become an intervener that's kind of a third party that's got an interest in the outcome of the case that doesn't bring the primary case so we're sitting in the court wondering how this is going to happen and I, I you know let, maybe over to you because i'll tell you a bit more of the details in a minute because it's a bit like watching you know some kind of legal case on the telly but it's you know it, it has its twists and turns but that's the first bit of it dave we we are in there because we've got an interest in it but it's not a commercial yeah. interest yeah. it's overtly a health interest i suppose it is isn't it really yeah. um yeah. and and i assume then that we provide evidence to back up this reduced harm claim uh, that we're making from a consumer viewpoint, which my feeling is it's not something that Swedish Match could do by itself, because obvious, you know, Mandy Rice Davis applies to anything Swedish Match says, doesn't it? As in, they would say that, wouldn't they? Yeah, yeah. So we, no. we, we are going to give all kinds of evidence, and I know you've got a barrel load of that as well. Yeah, well, we apply, as it were, in the public interest. We don't have a commercial interest, but we are offering to assist the court with additional argument and additional evidence. So we're representing the views of consumers and arguing that SNUS has had huge beneficial impact in Sweden, that the evidence suggests that that could have an impact here, and there is a kind of a right for people to have reduced risk products. So that's the gist of our argument. So we've had to amass a lot of evidence. We had what are called witness statements um, by some of our helpers from Louise Ross, from Carl Lund, who some of you may have heard of in, in, in Norway, uh, from INCO, the International Network of Nicotine Consumer Organizations, and, and, and I myself did a witness statement. So we've got the witness statements, we've got the legal argument, and we've got the application device. So there's a kind of a dossier of information that goes in to make our case. But now, this is the interesting thing. The argument today was not at all about the evidence. The main argument today was whether Swedish Match was within its rights to proceed with the case, or whether, as the Department of Health argued, they were out of time. So the twists and turns of legal stuff, the Department of Health didn't object to the case on substantial grounds. They didn't say, you know, the, the ban is justified. What the Department of Health were arguing was that Swedish Match had put in this application too late. Ah, right. Yes, that old, that old chestnut that it was yes. too long after. But of course, you can't, you can't object to a law until it's passed, can you really? That's what, that's, that you're, you should be a lawyer, but that's, <laughs> <laughs> um, and that's what it comes down to. You see, the Department of Health played a card saying, we're not going to argue about the rights and wrongs of this, but we're going to play the card. You can't do this because you're too late. There's a time limit and you pass the time limit. So the Department of Health comes in and says, Swedish Match should have done this in 2014 when the TBD went through, right? Mm -hmm. Swedish Match said, 
You can't do that because that's not law. You can't do it until it's in English law. So Swedish Maps say we put in our objection the day after it became law. You know, the TPD was passed into law in the UK in 2016. And you couldn't be more so, timely than that, could you really? You couldn't be. So we're sitting there and this nice judge is sort of looking there and she's, she's interrupting the Swedish Match barrister who comes from a law firm called Matrix Chambers. They're one of the top legal groups. So he gives his argument, you know, well, we put it in time and the Department of Health said, no, you didn't, you should have done it before. And so she, you know, we have about 50 minutes, 40, about half an hour of this. And she says, right, we're going to recess now. I'm going out for 10 minutes and coming back with my decision. So we'll go out into the corridor. And then uh, she comes back in. And I think she had made up her mind the night before, because you get the documents in advance, you know, and they know all the, they read all the case law and all the rest of it. And by the way, she was reading this out, you know, about 600 words. And I think it had been drafted in advance, you know, just, you know. And Jess and I are sitting there thinking, she's saying this, she's saying that, saying this. And then we suddenly detect that she's coming down on the side of Swedish match. And as we go on further, you know, that we're sort of gripping each other at the back row. And she says, I'm, you know, she says, you, you, the law, you can't challenge a law until the law's been passed. And so Swedish match is within time because they brought the challenge, you know, as soon as the law had been brought in. So that's the first bit. So, because what we want to do hinges on the first bit of the case. If the Swedish match had got knocked out, then there's no role for us at all. So, kind of, you know, five minutes into her doing this thing, you know, we're picking, hanging on every word. So the first bit of the so that's the first bit. So that first side really back to you. So right, we're now at the situation where our top court has decided it can go ahead. This this actually needs to happen. Yeah. The Department of Health hasn't put any substantive argument in. They've just come in and said now they're out of time, but they've yeah. got no other objections. That's going to have to be noted, surely. You yes. know, when it gets passed over. The court's going to know, well, actually, they, were just, they, they, they don't really have an objection because it just went in out of time. So now you ask the question, I suppose, officially, can we join in? And what did they say yeah. then? Yes. Yeah, so our barrister, you know, in his nicely permed wig, you know, and uh, black, you know, whatever gown and everything, he, he, he then gets up and asks for us to be joined to the case. And he was expecting, a, you know, he, he thought, he said afterwards, I, he thought that, because she passed all this other stuff so through, through so easily, he was going to be like interrogated about NNA and why we were wanting to join. And she, she'd had all the NNA documents that she obviously read, and she said that she was, you know, happy with the application. And then she turned to the Swedish match barrister and said, "Do you have any objection?" And he said no. And then she turned to the Department of Health barrister and asked the Department of Health Barrister if he had any objection to NNA being joined to the case. And he said no. So, you know, within three minutes, NNA had been joined to the case. So by that time, Jess and I were wobbling, you know, kind of wanted to, sort of wanted to stand up in the back row and say, you know, hooray, we're, we're there. Um, but we didn't. We were very polite and very quiet. And uh, Jess didn't even vape in the court, so I can tell you that. Um, <laughs> so we're sitting there, and then it goes into a whole lot of detail about the next stages. And I, 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 we'll come on to that in a minute. I, I, I just... See, I think this, <laughs> it, it's quite tickled my fancy because I had visions of the whole thing taking up the whole of today and probably tomorrow yeah. while there was all these arguments about no, he's not tall enough, no, they haven't been around long enough, no, they don't know enough and, and so on and so yeah. forth. And for, to just turn around and go, yeah, I'm good with it. You know, that's fine yeah. from everybody. Yeah. Yeah. It, it does kind of make you think that, I don't know, and, and you'll know better than me, but it does kind of make you think that the Department of Health is sitting there thinking, actually, you're right, we shouldn't win. Is that, is that a feeling you get? I don't know, because if you recall with the Totally Wicked Challenge, the Department of Health didn't take a position. They didn't object to it going forward, but they didn't support it going forward. 
So here they're trying. Here they were trying to stop it. I mean, w one interpretation could be that they really don't have an objection, but they were just trying on the technical thing because it it saves them a lot of time and resources if it doesn't go forward. Because as it goes forward, it now means the Department of Health have to do a lot of legal work and for the next stage. So I think they were hoping they could just get this out of the way. You know, we're busy. We've got a lot of other stuff to do. Do it on a, a legal legal time challenge only. But there you are. I, 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 I did um, pick up from the Department of Health that they saw that this was going to take an awful lot of their time. And given that we are Brexiting in any case, was it worth our while doing this? Uh, and What did you uh, say? I said, it is worth doing this. Of course it is. Uh, it's worth doing this both for Europe, because NNA, you know, it's not just the UK, but it's the, if, if this goes in our favour, it affects the whole of Europe. Yes. Uh, but what I didn't say to her, that it's something we all need to think about, is that how we can use this case to begin to put pressure on the DH to change the law in any case post-Brexit. Yeah, it well, gets them into, yeah. That, 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 was, yeah, that yeah. was my next question. I mean, you know, if... The next stage is the European Court of Justice. Let, I'm going to try and do this in chronological order, otherwise I'll just yes. subvert yes. everything. So the next thing is it goes to the European Court of Justice, but there's, there's paperwork to do before then, isn't there? There's a lot to do. and There's a bit of technical stuff to do. What has happened to happen next is that the High Court has to make a reference to the European Court. I mean, the reason the High Court can't make a judgment on this is because the, the UK law is based in European law. So it's not a straightforward judicial review within the UK. But as soon as this question is raised, then the UK has to pass it on to Europe because Europe is just following, UK is just following the European law. So what happens now is that there's what's called a reference, which will be an agreed document which sets out the issues and the, you know, the pros and cons, the ramifications, why it's a legal issue. And that document will actually be drawn up by the three barristers to try to get a little bit of consensus. So the Department of Health barrister was kind of saying, we don't really want to be involved in this because we don't want to be seen to be questioned in the TPD. But what happens is there's a legal document to go forward to the European court, but that document has to be drawn up and agreed both by all sides in it, you know, what are, what are the issues here? And then that document comes back to the High Court to be signed off by this judge and then goes off to the European Court. So it'll take about a month to get that reference sorted out, you know, which really sets out what the arguments are and you know, to which you attach all the evidence that um, NLA is providing, all the evidence that uh, Swedish Match has and so on. So, that's a reference to the European Court of Justice. And then they will look at it <laughs> and then they will decide what to do next. And then they will have some hearings and it could take about 12 to 15, 16 months. Now, there will be a hearing at the European Court of Justice and it's at that stage where um, the uh, NNA and other evidence will be examined and I'll probably have to go and maybe our witnesses as well might have to go to appear before the court. Right. But our role is kind of a little bit, it's small, but it's important. We're doing the consumer angle and in this reference that I referred you to, um, I mean, the judge said, well, NNA should really have a paragraph within that setting out its, um, its case. So we get a little bit. But right. we get an important bit. So the next stage, get the documents together, then they go off to the European Court, and then I'm not too clear on the next stages. But if you remember the Totally Wicked case, it was a year or so, I think, before there was a final decision from the European Court of Justice. Yes, I now, think it, yes. it got put yeah. back a bit, didn't it? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And there was the Philip Morris case as well. There have been three challenges, I think, all knocked back. So don't get too optimistic yet. I mean, we've got a result of sorts already, which is good, but yes. there's more to come.
Oh, I, I, I mean, I don't think anybody should underplay what has occurred thus far. I'm, I'm trying to do this without an NNA hat on and trying to be, you know, an interviewer. It, it, and it's very, yeah. very difficult. I haven't even had yeah. an alcoholic beverage yet, but I am about to. That's going to change very, very quickly. But this whole thing, uh, the fact that the NNA has been allowed to intervene, is an intervener, is going to be uh, giving evidence in the European Court of Justice and actually has its foot on this mm. ladder, I think that's so yeah. newsworthy in and of itself. Um, and my hope is this whole interview gets shared far and wide, and my hope as well is that the news media will pick up on this because I, I do think this is really newsworthy. Because as you said earlier on, I mean, we're talking about an organisation that is less than a dozen people, um, has so little funding that, you know, we couldn't take a case on like this ourselves. Um, but here we are, the David yes. to the Goliath, as it were. Yes. Here we are, the yes. NNA is the David taking on the Goliath of the EU via the Department of Health. My hope is that the Department of Health doesn't get in the way and just says, actually, we agree. I don't know what the likelihood of that is. Um, I, I think the work that you've done thus far is absolutely fabulous. My, the questions that are running through my head, and I'm trying to pick stuff up from, from the, the Periscope chat as we go as well, is how public will all of these um, bits of paper be? I mean, you know, will, will vapors and snus users throughout the EU be able to reference them somewhere on the web? Do you know? Well, I, I think we've got to make as much of this as we can. And it's been so good today to see how far and wide the social media reach has been. I mean, the wires, I think we call them, can't call them the wires anymore, but you know, the, the, the messaging and the retweeting of what's happening going all around. We've picked up a little bit of mainstream media stuff so far. There was a uh, Daily Express article today, and we're trying to push it out to the regular media. So we've got to get this argument very live. I mean, it, it doesn't actually affect the court decision that much. As you know, Totally Wicked did a lot of work to gain support, uh, but the judges aren't swayed by that. But what that support does, <clears throat> I think, is begin to alert governments that there is an issue here, there's something wrong. So we need to use the case politically to argue that this ban on snus is just daft and the ban kills. You know, here we have something which has helped thousands of Swedes and Norwegians to avoid smoking, the um, to smoking related mortality in Norway and Sweden is the lowest in Europe. We know that if the same happened here, we we have good results and we know you know we're all we've all worked together on e-cigarettes and vaping and we've seen the huge uptake but you know vaping doesn't suit everybody but the uptake and interest in vaping the millions who've tried e-cigarettes in the UK indicates a huge appetite for safer products so we've got to start spreading that political message that we need a wide range of things. You know, one size doesn't fit all. Or, you know, many people use a bit of this and a bit of that. So politically, we need to get that message and all the support that we get from blogs and from social media, you know, that's that's all good. And you'll have seen we've got hashtags, which I remember is legalize snus and snus saves lives. I think those are the hashtags. So that's one thing, the, the political stuff. Then getting the arguments more public. Well, we will, when we're allowed to, we'll publish our evidence online. We can't do that yet because the documents are not yet before the court. And I, I need to get you know, the, the lawyers to advise at what stage we can put all that stuff out there. So there will be stage when we're much more public about the ins and outs of this. And that's important because there are arguments that we've put which people in other countries or other parts of the world might be able to marshal if they want to campaign as well. And I'll tell you a little bit about some of the detail of what we're arguing um, in a minute. So it's getting the political push for this now 
plus getting the information out there so people could see what we're actually arguing. It's, I was kind of, all, there's been all kinds running through my head all day, as you can well imagine. I mean, this is it's such fantastic news, it really is. And it, it seems to me that, that we've got an opportunity here to put tobacco harm reduction on the map, or tobacco risk reduction, whatever you yeah. want to call it. And that if, and this was one of the questions I wanted to ask you, let's, I know it's a massive big if, it's a huge big if, but if the ECJ goes the way we would like them to, if we get the right result, how does that knock on into ACIGs and hate not burn? Because it's got to have an effect, hasn't it? I think it has, and that's one of the reasons why NNA got involved, because we would like to see access to a wide range of alternative nicotine products. We've got traditional ones like SNUS, which have been badly dealt with in the TPD because there's a, you know, we've got more evidence of, for the effect of SNUS than for nearly anything else. And SNUS is the only one that's illegal. And you've got, you know, as you said, heat not burn. You've got hybrid products. You're going to have different types of e-cigarettes. I think we're just at the beginning of seeing a whole range of new products. Some get onto the market easily because heat not burn comes in as a novel tobacco product. So they don't have to put in any like anything like the dossier you have to put in regarding an e-cigarette. So the whole system is very discriminatory and, and disproportionate and SNOS mm. has got the worst deal of all. But the reason to get behind this is because, as you say, it's, it pushes further the agenda for, if you want to call it tobacco harm reduction or smoking harm reduction, pushes forward the agenda that there are much safer ways of using nicotine for those people who enjoy using nicotine. So that's, that, that, that's I think, what's in it. You know, it, it it's technically, it's about SNUS, but it's also fighting this battle for people in the UK, people in Europe, people around the world to have a right to safer products. Uh, and that word right is actually quite important and I can explain a little bit more about that in, in, in a moment. But this has, it has a bigger, bigger, it's, it's, snus is big, but it's bigger than snus. Yes, exactly yes. right, exactly or right. snus, as I keep, I keep getting reprimanded because I can't help but call it snus and then people say, it's okay, but Jerry pronounced it wrong. So for me, snus is snus and snus is snus. Snus means snus, is, uh, whatever you want to call it. Anyhow, that's just an aside. Teabags. Tea bags. Tea bags. Yes. It's just as easy. Right yeah. with moose. I can't say it like that. <laughs> yeah, look, I mean, you know, INCO is just uh, the INCO org that we all know about, has, ju has just mentioned on the, uh, the Periscope timeline there, that they're ever so proud that they've been asked to give evidence as well. Because this is actually, it's not just the EU, it'll be global. If the EU yeah. is forced to reverse its decision on SNUS and legalise it throughout the EU, it will go worldwide. It can't not, okay. can it? Well, I think it helps it to go worldwide. I mean, because, for example, you know, the US is already more in favour or, you know, allows these products, whereas it's in the, U in the EU, it's only Sweden. Norway, not in the EU, allows these products. Many countries ban these products. Many countries that ban them have quite nasty other chewing and oral tobaccos which are quite toxic you know it's always amazed me that india bans chewing tobaccos oral tobaccos which are actually yeah, there's good reason for banning those because they are pretty toxic but doesn't allow other things to come in you know safer products to come in place so yeah it's a little bit like with e-cigarettes as we see another country become positive you know, new zealand canada possibly malaysia you know it you get three, four, five countries, changes the whole dynamic. You know, you get more people pro. And then I think, you know, for me, that has a, a knock-on effect. And internationally, you know, it comes to the international meetings and so on, WHO and so on. You, once you've got a, a good cluster of countries which are pro, then things begin to change. So there's, um, there's kind of a, a lot to play for here. Yes. Yes, yes, indeed there is. It's, 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 I, I think it's, it's massively important, and I think it's um, a turning point. Um, it's a point in history that will go down. And, has, and as has been said, if you succeed, 
if the NNS succeeds and you succeed in getting this overturned, you can call Snooze whatever you want. <laughs> Thank you. You call it Janice if you want, yeah. or Chris. Yeah. Yeah. I, sorry, I didn't see who typed that in, but yes, Janice, Chris, yeah. you call it Stephen, Peter, I couldn't give a monkeys. Yeah. You, yeah. If, if you, I've just, I, I mean, I've always been proud to call you a friend, but I'm even proud of tonight, mate. You've done a hell of a job, you really have. So where do we go from here? Where do we go from here? Well, yes. Uh, I mean, first, I mean, who would have thought it that a bunch of vapors and their friends would within a couple of years be taking the Department of Health to court and taking a challenge to the European Court of Justice. So where do we go from there? I think there's, there's a lesson here for nicotine consumer organizations, vaping consumer organizations, that you can do things, you know, you, you, with a few friends, a few legal, a bit of a legal, you, you can actually initiate things. And, you know, we've only got to look at what happened in Australia with the New Nicotine Alliance Australia and their challenge to the legal ban on nicotine. Now, we'll know the result of that in mid February. But that was a really smart move because everybody was saying, oh, what are we going to do in Australia? The fine for possessing nicotine is 8,000 Australian dollars. You know, it's the same for the fine for possessing heroin. You know, you, you can moan about that. You can moan about that on you know, Twitter to each other and say, oh, it's miserable. And, you know, but then get a few people together, get an organization together, begin thinking about what the opportunities are. And NNA Australia, tiny little organization, but they got some good advice and they put that legal challenge in. So I think the where do we go from here is that this, I hope, will inspire other groups to take action as well and, and inspire other individuals to come together as organizations. I mean, you kind of know I'm a bit of an organization man when it comes to this. I've always said to you all, it's okay, you can shout as much as you like on Twitter, you can write to your MP, you can write to your MEP, but you do need an organisation, you've got a letterhead, you've got legal status, if you can get it, and then you can write to the minister, you can apply to do a court action, you can write to the WHO. So, massive, massive advocacy on Twitter, and of course, you know, remember the TPD, it was the objections from vapors which turned that around and that wasn't organized in, in organizations that was organized around an idea but come to a stage where it's important you organize so that i think be my first message here what can you learn you can get somewhere where do we go from here uh there's a lot of work to be done regarding snooze um in familiarizing people with it because one of the difficult arguments is you're saying this thing should be legal here but then nobody knows what the fact is nobody knows what it is many people don't know what it is so there's an educational thing here yeah. because it's banned there's not a constituency here that's come up above the parapet says i use it i buy it here and there so um making it more visible third you know putting pressure on the Department of Health to begin to think seriously about this. Now, Matt Ridley, who some of you may know, Lord Ridley, he has written with 22 other parliamentarians to Jeremy Hunt to say, are you considering snus in the tobacco control plan? And so kind of where do we go from here? I think it's when we have opportunities to remind ourselves and others that it's about a whole range of of, of products and I'm saying you know where do we go from here I'm not talking about the technicalities of the, the, the court process and the ECG because I think that's got a, a trajectory but it's kind of widen this argument and I sorry to go on about it a lot but I when I first sort of tentatively raised this issue with NNA trustees uh, and when I started tweeting around about snus I was very worried that you lot might say, well, what's this? We're quite happy with e-cigarettes, you know. Why should we bother with this, you know? Because we, we love, we love our, you know, what you've got in your hands. And why should we start using 
little tea bags like this. Why should we be promoting that? But what has been fantastic is that everybody gets it that there should be choices. You know. Well, everybody, everybody buttons. outside wheels, that is. <laughs> yeah. It, people, people use e cigs love e cigs But, you know, there are some people who are going to love this. I mean, I don't like any of them. You know, you know me, I'm a, I'm a, not, a, I'm a failed nicotine user. But, um, you know, this is... <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> um, um, so this stuff, you know, has a role. So we need to start bringing that into conversations. And, you know, it's interesting also because um, you, know, you can't ban this in public places, you know. You, uh, that's, that's the point, isn't it? I mean, you know, who can object? Nobody can object to anybody using yeah. it in public. And that's... That's a good yeah. thin end of the wedge. Yeah. Um, you know, I've tried it. I tried that yeah. the, the white stuff, and and I am one of the many people. Well, I'm one of the people that just simply can't use it. No. Um, we know the effect it had on me. I'm not going to make um, a, a big thing about it, but I just I just can't use it. I wish I could. Yeah. Because it would be so um, handy on flights and stuff, but not going to happen. But uh, well, yeah. Well, sorry. Go on. Also, is that. You have to learn how to use, just as you have to learn how to use an e-cigarette, you have to learn how to use this. So even a high nicotine e-cigarette user using this for the first time might get a little bit of a nicotine overdose, you know, a little bit of nausea, a little bit of a high because they're absorbing it too quickly. You know, because the, the wetter your mouth is, the quicker this dissolves. So... It just it's like when you start to smoke a cigarette, you don't know how much to inhale. You know, as a kid, you feel a bit sick. You know, you learn how, you know, with e-cigarettes, you learn how to take it in with this as well. You know, some people who use it, and I've seen my <laughs> colleagues take this for the first time. And um, Yeah, I was, I was going to say, you've just reminded me of Andy before he flew back up to, uh, back up to Scotland. Yeah. Um, I've so, never uh, seen the nick ups go quite as badly. Yeah. But, but, you know, talking to snus users, not, you know, there's a few in the UK, but uh, it looks to me more like we're moving to something where people may be using different things in different circumstances. You know, e-cigarettes plus this, plus, you know, other things. Bit of, for some people, a bit of mix and match, you know. But who knows, because I, I don't use this or anything else, so uh, I'm not an expert on the... Um, on um, using nicotine. Well, the one the one thing I can tell everybody watching though is if you're somewhere where they're going to really clamp down on your vape, and if Jerry's around, go and tap him up. He's always got snooze on him. Jules, <laughs> three boxes he got out when we had the NNA face to face meeting. He really did. Well, this is this is this is low low tech. It's it's sorry, it's it's no no tech. You know, no batteries. <laughs> I'm sorry, you know, but it's uh, anyhow. No, I'm, I'm not selling the stuff. I mean, I'm not I'm running an underground market in snooze, although, um, by the way, it's not too hard to obtain it in the UK if you want to give it a try, even though it's technically um, like many things, you know, you can get hold of it if you, you wish. I, I ordered some online and it was delivered in the post a couple of days later. Test purchase. Yes. Well, you have to do these is, things. Is, is Israeli snooze. Israeli snooze. That's upside down, Jerry. <laughs> it's pronounced Nassan. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> is that the right way up? Yeah, it's the right way up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <sighs> There's a question. Super 7 has just said Will snooze work in the space station? We'll have to see if we can get some, somebody up there. Yes. Oh, it, probably. It, I, can you vape? I suppose it probably would work when vaping. I don't know if vaping is dependent on zero gravity. I don't know. I've got no idea. No. I haven't got a clue. It would be, it would be an interesting experiment, but I can't see uh, Lynn Dawkins can, taking it on. I can pretend to be an expert in most things, but nicotine use in space stations isn't yet part of my repertoire. No. No. So, right, Jerry, Jerry, what, because I'm conscious of the time and we're taking up a lot of your time and, um, you know, what, 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 what else is there that we need to cover? What else do you want to say tonight? 
because I know you're on a high. I've never seen you as uh, as happy, if I'm to be honest. I am a bit animated tonight, and I did. Um, I brought a bottle of champagne on the way home to celebrate. <laughs> uh, we only had time for a cup of coffee afterwards. They're you know, not a big thing in the pub, so yeah, you know, I, it's. Um, I hope everybody shares my enthusiasm. I'm still quite overwhelmed uh, by. You know, where we where we've got to, I, you know, I set off this morning from home thinking, you know, we're not going to get anywhere with this. It's going to be knocked back. Yeah, you know, Swedish match going to be knocked back, and we won't get a try in, or a Swedish match will get allowed. But the judge will say NNA is just a little bit of a kind of an irritant. Nothing much else to um, you know to 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 add. So yeah, it's. Um, yeah. Even if we get no further, we've demonstrated a lot, and we've we, we've done a you know we, we've moved things on on a little bit. And um, yeah, I just think that you know, I'm big enough NNA tonight. And you're trying to sit there as the impartial, you know, but you're involved with NNA as well. But you know, we know, you know important stuff. You know, loads of people around the country do important stuff all over with regard to harm reduction, you know, whether it's campaigning about against bans on vaping in public places, whether it's sending in submissions to consultations, whether it's fighting the next bit of bad science. So it's all part of this big effort we're making to have sensible policies which help people use safer nicotine products. Yes. There you are. Yes. I've, I've got to say, you know, from, from my own perspective, here we are in a situation where a small organisation that's very, very young and has no money. And I just wonder what we could achieve if we were a slightly bigger organisation and we had the money to be able to buy in the services we need and get to the places we need to be. Because on a shoestring, with a small number of people, we've, we've, uh, we've done this. And... As Wraith Tech has just said, if it all stops right here, NNA has a foot in the door in future legal issues, and that is an excellent thing. Um, and all credit to you, Jerry, for sorting all of this out, because without you, I'm not sure we'd have been able to do it. Um, I'm so over the moon, it's unbelievable. Um, and and uh, the gin is going to be hit hard when this finishes, I'm here to tell you. So there you go. Any message... To the viewers, I just keep saying things like onwards. I mean, just think of what has been achieved by vapors and their friends. Uh, you know, it's, it, it is the David and Goliath thing because, as you know, and all people listening know, you know, every other day there's some dark bit of science and there's another thing to rebut, and uh, we're, we're, we're getting there. You know, it, it, it's an awful lot of stuff that wastes time, but last four to five years, it's generally been progress. You know, we are better off in the UK than in most other countries, and we need to share that. Uh, but, you know, in other countries, things are moving in good directions as well. You know, there are, there are bad things going on, even in, in Europe, you know, as, as INCO identifies. But keep up the good work, you know, whether it's as an individual making comments on Twitter, talking to friends, you know, vapors, talking to smokers, or whether it's joining an organization or whether it's dipping your hand in your wallet and giving a bit of money to NNA to help it survive and progress. There's just so many ways in which all of us can shift forward this very important agenda to make accessible, safer nicotine products for people who like to use nicotine. I mean, it's a, it's a no-brainer, but we've got a lot of people opposing us who uh, don't always share our views, but maybe they'll keep quiet one day. Well, yes, you never, you never just know your look on this one. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wind it up now um, and, and kind of, for the first time this evening, take full screen myself. Um, before I do, Jerry, you have my undying gratitude. You know that. Um, I'm proud to count you amongst my friends. I'm pleased to know you, um, is, and I'm just over the moon with what you've achieved today. Um, next time we meet, first pints on me. And a second. Do you have a second? 
<laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> I've got, I'm married to Yorkshire last and I've got friends in Scotland. Let's not go too far on this. Uh, no, superbly well done, superbly Thanks, well Dave. done. Oh, and thank you for coming on. Um, now, just, just to say to everybody, where do we go from here? My little take on it, right? And this time with an NNA hat on. Share this out, please. Let everybody see this. Let everybody know what the NNA has managed to do today. Um, people take the mickey out of me when I say thank you NNA, but thank you Jerry and thank you NNA for actually achieving this. It's a momentous step. So share it out to everybody. Get uh, everybody to follow NN Alliance on Twitter and also on Periscope. And if they're on Facebook, they've got the new Nicotine Alliance page on there. Doesn't matter which social media you use of the biggies. Get everybody there. I've been recording this as it goes, so I'm going to stick it up on YouTube and I'm going to stick it onto Facebook as well so that it's there in all its glory for everybody to see. Um, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for listening and for doing all the work that you do. Uh, like I say, use Facebook, use Twitter, use YouTube, use everything you've got. Post it everywhere you can. Let's get everybody involved. This is, it's not hard work. It's foot slogging work. It just takes time. But we've been at this two years or less. We've done it with very little money. Um, and thank you to everybody that's donated. Um, no matter how that's happened, uh, it, it's helped. I mean, we've got to be able to do this kind of thing. We've got to do this more and more. And we will do this more and more. That's why the NNA is here. That's why I'm proud, proud, proud to be a trustee of the NNA because at the end of the day, the NNA will save lives, but we can't do it without your help. So for the moment, uh, indeed, I want to say a great big thank you for tuning in. Share, follow, like, all those good things that you do to let everybody see it. And until we speak to you next time, and the NNA will be speaking to you, a lot on Periscope. Thank you again for tuning in. See you next time. Bye-bye.